Let's talk about solo backpacking. Yeah. Welcome back guys and cows as always. My name is Matt. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about hiking and backpacking. I am Canadian. I go to some pretty sweet places in the Rockies. So if any of that interests you guys, click on the subscribe button over here. And like I said, today we're talking about solo backpacking. If you guys have ever thought about doing a solo backpacking trip and you just haven't been able to and you've got some fears and reservations about it, that is completely understandable. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple little tips and tricks and a couple things that I actually do on my solo backpacking trips that may help you guys out and help you guys get out on a solo backpacking trip. So what do you say? Let's dive into it. The first thing we're going to talk about directly relates to your gear. When it comes to your gear, especially for a solo backpacking trip, you should absolutely know your gear and I strongly recommend trying it out and testing it at home. Whether it's your pot and stove or your hammock or even your backpack, testing your gear out at home before a solo backpacking trip is extremely important. When you're out there solo on a backpacking trip completely by yourself, everything's different. If you're out backpacking with a group, you've got others that you can rely on if something goes wrong or if you can't figure out how to get your stove to work or you can't get your tent pitched. But when you're out backpacking by yourself, the only person you can rely on is yourself. So when it comes to your gear, making sure you know how to use it is extremely important. The only person you can rely on out there, like I said, is yourself. So knowing your gear, testing it out at home, extremely important. If you've got that new tent, take it out in your yard and set it up. It's actually not even a bad idea, especially with a tent. Take your hose and sprinkler and have your sprinkler run over the tent for an hour or two, and then go inside afterwards and see if you've got any leaks in your tent and see if you can locate them. I know some tents out there do require a bit of seam sealing. So that's a good thing to know before you go on a backpacking trip, you get a little bit of rain overnight and you wake up completely soaked. It can absolutely ruin a trip. So yeah, like I said, testing your gear at home, know your gear. The second one we're going to talk about today kind of only pertains to people that have already done a backpacking trip. So if you're looking at doing a solo backpacking trip for your very first backpacking trip altogether, this one's not really going to help you out. But keep listening because we are going to have some tips that are going to help you guys out. But for those of you that have done backpacking trips with groups and you're looking at trying to do a solo backpacking trip, don't be afraid of going to a place that's familiar for your first trip. Having the feeling of familiarity when you're out there on your own can definitely help. It can be a huge booster to your morale, kind of knowing where you are. It helps get rid of some of those fears and those little dark places in your mind that you go to when you're out there on your own. I always suggest for somebody going out on their first solo trip, Go to a place that you know, to a place that you're familiar with. Like I said before, knowing your gear, knowing your location can definitely help on a solo trip. The next tip we're going to talk about directly ties into the last one where we talked about going to a place that's familiar. Now, when you go to that location, you have that location picked out, leave a detailed itinerary with somebody back home, like a friend or a loved one, you know, your husband, your wife, your spouse, your best friend, whatever. I guess this kind of goes as general, just general backpacking advice. So this isn't even just solo backpacking trips, but it's a good practice to follow for any backpacking trip you do. And this is what I do is we have a like a whiteboard on my fridge and I leave my detailed itinerary with my fiance. I just write down on the whiteboard exactly where I'm going, where I'm going to be each night. Having one or two people that you can leave a detailed itinerary with, you're going to be staying each night on your backpacking trip. It's nice peace of mind having somebody back home know where you're going to be. If something goes wrong, they're going to know where to send an SAR crew to help you out if necessary. And directly tying in with that, mentioning an SAR crew or search and rescue crew, if you didn't know what that one meant, carrying a device like this. This is my Delorme inReach. You don't necessarily have to have an inReach. Spot makes a satellite communicator and there's satellite phones. And there's a couple other companies out there that make satellite communication devices but what this device does is this allows me to have two-way communications with somebody back home so when i'm out on a backpacking trip i have the ability to fire a message to my fiance let her know where i am let her know you know how my day went whatever with this one she can respond back to me it's almost like having like texting abilities which i know may kind of you know seem like a weird thing for somebody going out in the back country to be able to like text my fiance back home but uh i can't recommend it enough uh, having the SOS feature on this thing. I mean, you know, knock on wood. Hopefully I never have to use the SOS feature on this thing, but uh, you know, it is there if I do need it. A satellite communication device or some way of communicating and, you know, reaching out for help back home if you do need it can definitely help you out on a solo backpacking trip. And extending on with that, don't be afraid to bring some comfort items on a solo backpacking trip. I think these are absolutely crucial. Now, comfort items can be anything. I know a lot of people like bringing books on backpacking trips. I know a lot of people like bringing paint sets on backpacking trips. If you're an artsy person, go out there and bring a paint set. You know, find a, an awesome spot to camp, set up, 
have a little paint session. Myself personally, what I do, I bring movies with me when I go out in the backcountry. And this isn't just solo trips, this is all my backpacking trips. I, uh, I load movies onto my phone and I watch movies before I go to bed. That's just kind of my thing. It, uh, I don't know, it, it helps me relax, it helps me sleep. I'm not really much of a reader. I, I, I don't really enjoy reading books. So uh, yeah, I bring movies with me as a comfort item. That might help you guys out too. Maybe bring some movies on your phone to help yourself chill out. If you're having a hard time sleeping, just pop some headphones in, throw in a movie, works for me. And as I'm babbling on here, if you guys have any other tips and tricks for solo backpacking or any kind of backpacking tips and tricks that can help people get out in the backcountry and alleviate some stress and get rid of some of those fears, drop them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one. If you're looking at getting out into a backpacking trip and looking for some tips and tricks on maybe some gear to carry in your backpack, or if you're looking to drop some weight in your backpack, what I've got up here is a playlist full of a whole bunch of weight-saving backpacking tips for you guys. So when you guys are done watching this one, Head on over and check that one out. But as always, guys, hi, I'm Maddie. Thank you all so dang much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next one.